It was partially cloudy but otherwise pleasant September day of 1909 in Berlin. A sizable crowd was assembled at the Temple of Green, the old parade ground of the Prussian army. They were there to see something incredible. A machine flying with a man controlling it. Orville Wright took off and flew for a few minutes above the crowd's heads, amazing the spectators. In that crowd, there was a 15 years old boy whose life was going to be changed by what he saw that day. Alexander Lippisch was born in 1884 in Munich. He studied art following the father's tradition. When the First World War erupted, he finally had the opportunity to pursue the bug for flight that hit him the day in Berlin. He didn't manage to become a pilot, but he served as an observer, a photographer and a mapper. After the war, he went to work for Zeppelin, demonstrating a real talent for aerodynamics and the ability to think out of the box. His most famous creation is the Messerschmitt 163 Comet, the famous rocket-propelled, tailless interceptor. But this is not relevant for our story. What is relevant is that Lippisch was on the list of the important scientists and technicians to be captured and taken to the United States at the end of the war in the context of the Operation Paperclip. So he settled at White Sands Air Base, but soon he started receiving visitors from California because someone was very interested in his work. Convert. Welcome to Millennium 7 Star, the channel that helps you make sense of military history and military technology. Please stay with me till the end because the stuff that we discuss here are not found anywhere else on YouTube. In the late 1945, the United States Army Air Force, the predecessor of the United States Air Force, was interested in a supersonic point interceptor. At the time, Consolidated Vulti, the predecessor of Convair, proposed a solution with the swept wings. At first, the propulsion should have been mixed rocket and turbojet, then a ramjet was proposed. However, none of these solutions demonstrated to be a viable approach to the problem once tested in the wind tunnel. And honestly, the propulsion that was chosen wasn't ideal at all. Convair designers were back the drawing board. In the meanwhile, together with Lippisch, something else had traveled from Germany to the USA. In the last few months of the Second World War, Lippisch was working on a supersonic ramjet-propelled point defense fight. His experience with delta wing gliders and tailless designs brought him to conceive a strange and sort of alien-looking configuration. To test this configuration, the construction of a glider known as the DM-1 was still ongoing when the American forces reached Munich. The US military government, recognizing some potential in the design, financed the construction, which was completed in November 1945. The DM-1 was then shipped to Langley Field in Virginia, where it was extensively tested in a large NACA wind tunnels. At the beginning, it showed a large drag, surely not suitable for supersonic flight, so NACA engineers started making changes. Uh, they reduced the vertical fin, but most critically, they adopted a sharp leading edge and a thinner airfoil, which produced the desired drag reduction. It was here that, for the first time, the classic delta wing vortices were noticed and recognized as a stable and regular feature. We don't know how and why Convair designers came to know the results of Langley tests, but the chief aerodynamic the research, Ralph Scheck, started considering the delta wing as a possible solution. So he has to be received by Lippisch himself to better understand the idea. Two men met at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base and Schick came back convinced that the delta wing was a solution to their problem. But another problem was that nobody had ever built a Delta Wing fighter. So Convair proposed to build a demonstrator. The United States Air Force accepted, even because in the meanwhile, the interest for a point interceptor was considerably reduced. And so the demonstrator was named 
XF92A. The XF92A had a quite bizarre look. The wing was what we would call today a classic delta. The vertical fin was a small delta wing too, but almost everything else was recycled from other planes, making it a sort of a Frankenstein monster. Even the fuselage design was the classic fuselage design of the first fighter jets, with a round intake on the nose and a long tail pipe for the engine. The plane first flew in September 1948, and after Convair tested that it was acceptably safe to fly, it was handed over to the United States Air Force in September 1949. The Air Force assigned no other than Chuck Yeager to the program with the purpose of investigating the wing behavior. And Jaeger delivered. He took the plane beyond the sound barrier for the first time, reaching Mach 1.05 in a shallow dive. Then, while landing, he pulled the nose up to slow down, but to his surprise, the plane did not show any sign of stall and it reached 45 degrees of angle of attack while still being fully in control. He had discovered the effect of the delta wing vortices, something that Jaeger is not famous for. The plane kept flying till 1953, improving the knowledge of delta wings. The data acquired with the XF-92A fully persuaded Convair that there was a potential to be developed. The good behavior at transonic speed and at the same time the good behavior at slow speed was something that no other wing platform seemed capable of achieving. And this conclusion was very important for the company because another challenge had landed on the table of conveyor designers. At the time, it was called the Ultimate Interceptor. Its real name will be the F-102 Delta Dagger, but this is the subject of another video. So if you found this video interesting, I'm sure you will find interesting the videos that are going to appear beside me. In the meanwhile, please like, dislike, subscribe and hit the bell so you won't miss anything. And if you could consider supporting the channel on Subscribestar and Patreon, that would be amazing. For now, thank you very much for watching, stay safe and see you in the next video.